<laughs> we parked at a, a Camp Wally, a Walmart near the airport. This is no overnight parking. And the front of our vehicle, literally our front <laughs> window view says no overnight parking. <laughs> Back in January, I crossed the Everglades to pick my friend Rachel up at the Miami airport and host her in my minivan. I've, I've never slept in a van before, but you know what? Did have periods of homelessness as a child, so I slept great. Rachel is the only person I would ever consider hosting in such a tiny home. And hey, plenty of space. Like, enough space is at least what I would say. Yeah, it was very adequate in all the ways. Adequate, yeah, just like our dinner last night. <laughs> well, that's good to hear, and because we're, we're doing it again tonight. <laughs> before our cruise tomorrow. In Miami, Walmarts have separate Cuban cafes with Cafe Con Leche. Look at all those air plants on that tree. Mm. Holy crap. And I'm going. We happened to be hanging out in Miami on the day of the 2020 Super Bowl, which was in Miami. To avoid the crowds, we visited a historic mansion called Vizcaya, which everybody recommends. Why is that one like a sprinkler and this one's a fountain? <laughs> Your inner child is really trying to make it happen today. These steps are made of a material called keystone. They're full of marine fossils, like a poor man's marble. Rachel and I are both professional architecture tour guides in Chicago, Illinois. But there's nothing like this in Chicago. I love nothing more than a good decorative ceiling. Oh, she's preening in the historic mirror. <laughs> That's the money shot. A beautiful. Villa Vizcaya was built on Biscayne Bay in the Coconut Grove neighborhood of Miami between 1914 and 1923. Everything about this place was just pure opulence and total eye candy. Hold up, I'm about to choke this duck. <laughs> you could write poems about the grandeur and beauty of this place, but I think the best way to enjoy it is just take it all in. The design director of these incredible interiors was an openly gay man named Paul Chalfin, who lived on a boat moored outside the mansion while the place was under construction. This is not only a unicorn and a pegasus, it's also a hippocampus, meaning it's part fish, part bird, part unicorn. Here's one clue this house isn't as old as the antiques it mimics, a telephone. Multiple guest bedrooms on the second floor have secret doors leading to the bathroom and quarters of the host's master bedroom, which was apparently quite scandalous at the time. And built in the 20s during Prohibition when alcohol was illegal, there's lots of fun illicit alcohol history at the museum too. If you enjoyed watching the interior, just wait until you see the grounds. The grounds also have an absolutely bonkers orchid garden.
What a wonderful way to spend Super Bowl Sunday in Miami, where the bowl game is happening at Vizcaya Gardens and Museum. Go sports ball. Every room was different. Everything was opulent and it never ended. Highly recommend, as does the rest of the world. After leaving Vizcaya, we headed down to Bill Baggs Cape, Florida State Park, where I got my passport stamped and we hung out at the beach for a little while. Bill Baggs Cape, Florida State Park is a great park. There's a lighthouse, a historic lighthouse, a great beach, and a lot of cheeky raccoons that I do not trust at all. Look at this weird little van. I have to go up to it, sorry. What is this tiny little vehicle? No one who chances upon the phenomenon of Stiltsville for the first time will ever forget the sight of homes that hover above the waters miles from any shore like structures from a dream. I wasn't thinking of the view of Stiltsville when I took us to Bill Bags for the beach, but it's just a mile away off of Cape Florida. While there were shacks in the flats as early as the 20s, the main structures preserved today, seven of them, were built starting in the 30s and into the 50s and 60s. What do you think they were? They were social hangouts, places for people to get away, and they were very popular in the 50s and 60s. 1965's Hurricane Donna put an end to building Stiltsville buildings, and though they are slowly but surely being eroded by hurricanes, they were officially marked for preservation in 2000. We left the park at sunset. We got really tired. We crossed the bridge and headed back to mainland Miami, and we ended up spending the night in North Miami near Oletta River State Park. That's a good looking skyline. The road trip that I'd just taken with Tacey really changed things for me. Van life got a lot easier, and I was able to follow my heart to whatever my next stop would be. These days, looking back at this footage, I just can't believe what I was surrounded by. Rachel and I woke up at Camp Wally this morning amongst a lot of RVs and high top vans with uh, Je Me Souvien Quebecois plates. We're now in Alita River State Park in North Miami which is a beautiful state park, which happens to have the beach access closed, no swimming for water contamination. Not sure what that means. We have about an hour and a half before we drive down into downtown Miami to park my vehicle and hop on the cruise. The MSC Armonia, February 3rd to 10th, seven day cruise to Ocho Rios, Jamaica, Georgetown, Grand Cayman, where else? Costa Maya, Mexico, and the MSC area in the Bahamas. And I am now on the Intercoastal Waterway. That is a strangler fig growing out of a palm tree by strangling it. We eventually rolled out of Alita River State Park in North Miami and drove to downtown Miami to park the car for the cruise. But of course, on the way there, I couldn't stop giving architecture tours. Here are some things I noticed. A great example of contextualist architecture. This is historic from the modernist era, and this is more recent. They are meant to match each other, and together they create like a gateway. Stop at the Starbucks, please. Oh. You up for this break fast coming soon. They broke up break breakfast. This is the federal building and United States courthouse in Miami made of keystone, but a classical facade. Those are fossils all in the facade of that building. What a cool building. And no drive through of Miami's architecture would be complete without the new 62 floor residential tower by the late Zaha Hadid. We are in floor five of the parking garage. If you are walking around downtown without looking up, and interacting with the human beings crawling all over the skyscrapers around you, you are missing out. Hashtag tour guide life. Now, if you've been following along, you know this was filmed in January 2020, which means that coronavirus was known, but not present in the United States. Check it out. Have we been to Wuhan? No, no, we definitely haven't. This was the first time coronavirus showed up in my footage of last winter. Oh, it's a milestone. My life has since completely changed, as have all of yours. <laughs>
Like and subscribe for future videos.